Jacob Abidjoma Honyato tonight. Indigents of Kogi West seek recall of Senator Dino Melae from National Assembly, even as the Senator describes the exercise as a comedy of errors. Acting President Yemi Oshibajo charges state governors to resist the temptation of playing politics with the nation's security and unity. Former Aviation Minister Femi Femi Kairi seeks to transfer his money laundering trial from a federal high court in Lagos to Abuja. And the United Nations declares that South Sudan is no longer in famine following an increase in aid to the war ravaged country. And in business news tonight, Nigeria ranks 19th in the latest African Investment Index and in weak economic environment. In sports news tonight, the Nigerian Football Federation pays tribute to former Super Eagles assistant coach Kenichi Imechele. And from Abuja, Federal Executive Council raises the red flag in the education sector, plans a retreat to seek ways of reviving the sector. Some indigents of Kogi West Senatorial District have submitted a petition for the recall of Senator Dino Melae at the Independent National Electoral Commission in Abuja. The leader of the delegation, Mr. Cornelia Sulu, told journalists that over 52% of the electorate in the senatorial district have signed the petition. He says the recall of Senator Malay is not politically motivated and that their decision to file the petition is based on what he called non-performance by the senator. Some indigents of Kogi West Senatorial District who say they have had enough of their senator after two years of representation at the National Assembly have collected signatures for the recall of Senator Dino Melai. Their move to recall the senator didn't end there. They were at the headquarters of the Independent National Electoral Commission in Abuja to submit their petition. We are here this afternoon to deliver the message of our people as regards the move to recall uh, the senator representing our central district, uh, distinguished Senator Dino Melae. The constitution requires that we should submit a petition backed up with um, above 50% of the number of registered voters. Um, the collection of the signatures has been done, and uh, that is why that, those are the signatures, those are the documents and the bags you saw us taken in. Some of the allegations which led to the filing of the petition include poor representation and non-execution of constituency projects. He has not brought on dividends of democracy. We have his co-senators in Kogi State, where we have Senator Gebi. He just got his mandate from, uh, from, 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 from tribuna, and when he got it, just in one year, he has empowered all his constituency. He has done a lot of youth empowerment projects. Where we have a senator who has been there for almost two for, for over two years now, and no impact. Instead of him to come and develop his people in every other means he has capacity to do, instead he will be in the National Assembly shouting, making noise. The petition was received by officials of the electoral body. While the Independent National Electoral Commission meets to take a decision on the petition for the recall of Senator Dino Melae, it will be interesting to see how events will unfold in the days ahead. Meanwhile, the man in the eye of the storm, Senator Dino Melae, has been reacting to the reports of the petition submitted to INEC by the electorate in his constituency. He is accusing the Kogi State Governor, Mr. Yahya Bello, of masterminding the process. Senator Malay, in a series of tweets, says, quote, It cannot succeed. It's a hoax, an absolute comedy of errors. Another tweet says, Many appointees will go to jail for forgery. Even dead people's names appear on the recall register. His last tweet says, quote, This comedy of errors will soon end. No shaking at all. This will solve the problem of not paying salaries for over 15 months. End of quote. Now, the acting president, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, wants state governors to resist the temptation of playing politics with matters of security as he pledges the federal government's commitment to working with states to ensure peace and stability in the country. 
Professor Oshibajo was speaking to the governors at the fifth consultative meeting on the expressions of discontent by northern youths at the State House. He emphasized the need to address the herdsmen and farmers' crisis in the states, describing the problems as multidimensional and requiring urgent attention. Our correspondent Gloria Kumezuke reports. Upon their arrival, the state governments exchanged bounties. The reason for this consultative meeting is a familiar one. The recent quit notice by some northern youths and calls for secession by a group of youths in the southeastern Nigeria. Some of the governors before the meeting shared their thoughts. We want unequivocal condemnation of the antics of the so-called Biafra. The Ariwa youths have no mandate to ask any Nigerian to back it in any part of this nation. We should all unite to surmount the, the difficulties that we have. I issued a, a, a statement in my state. I said nobody is given any quick notice. Everybody should stay and enjoy his stay in Plateau State. I, I don't think it was um, you know, something that we should take very seriously. Uh, because um, this uh, young uh, man can be said to be speaking for the north. So uh, I think he just a way to hit up the system so that it's being handled. The acting president. A few minutes later, the acting president's arrival, as well as leaders from the legislative and executive house, national security advisor, service chiefs, among others, completed the full house. Resenting the recent expressions of discontent by some northern youths, the acting president urged governors to put politics aside and do everything to prevent a degeneration. We must resist the temptation to play politics, especially with matters of security, or to reach for simple or simplistic narratives that might be momentarily expedient and satisfying, but are false, misleading, and sometimes unhelpful to a proper understanding of the issues. The acting president also hopes to address the issues surrounding farmers and herdsmen clash, which he says took center stage during discussions in previous meetings. It's absolutely important that we're able to make lasting and satisfactory solutions uh, to these problems. Of course, the problems are multidimensional, but the states have a very important role to play, especially because states are in control of land in, in their territories. And a lot of these disputes are first disputes over land, aside from, uh, obviously, uh, the other sociocultural issues and the issues around security. One thing has remained constant for the federal government, that is the warning for these groups to desist from fanning the embers of violence or face the full wind of the law. Gloria Umezuke, Channel News. And staying with that story, all persons behind the ultimatum given to Igbos to leave the north will be arrested and prosecuted. Now that's coming from the Kaduna State Governor Nasir El Rafai. The governor said this when he received Igbo leaders from the 19 northern states at the government house in Kaduna. The dust generated by the three months ultimatum issued to Igbos living in the north by a coalition of Arewa youth organization is yet to settle down with mixed reactions that followed it. This is why the Eze Igbos and other stakeholders from the southeast living in the northern part of the country are meeting with Governor Nasir El Rufai of Kaduna State. In their remarks, the Igbo leaders stress that Nigeria is more united as one country, hence condemns any act that is capable of the peace and unity of the nation. We are with our brothers. Sir, please do not relent in your efforts for the struggle of indivisible Nigeria. But as uh, elders, we, are, we want to give advice that all these things that are causing this problem, 
let the government look into it. Describing the purported ultimatum by the Arewa youth as provocative and mischievous, Governor El Rafai urges southeastern leaders to caution their youth from making inciting statements capable of truncating the peace and unity of the country. Those young people that are shouting for are the ones that will go and carry the guns, and they are the ones that will get killed. It's not me and you. We are too old. But we have not taught them by example and through discipline and enforcement of law that what they are doing is wrong. And we have to do it. This is my appeal to you, Your Royal Highnesses. We all need Nigeria. It is from within Nigeria we can all be greater. Governor El Rufai emphasizes the need for the abolition of indigenship dichotomy if Nigeria must remain united and remain as an indivisible entity. I have recognized the contribution of Indigo in Kaduna. We want to encourage private entrepreneurs. We want to create jobs for young people. It's not possible without private enterprise. You are enterprising people. All you need is a level playing field. We are going to do what we have to do to protect everyone in Kaduna. We'll do whatever it takes. Our unity is our strength. We can be great within the Nigerian context. Meetings such as these are no doubt reassuring and perhaps will help douse the tension that the ultimatum has generated. As these Igbo leaders depart from here, Governor El Rufai reassures them that Nigeria's strength lies in unity, hence they have no need to fear. In the meantime, the only of you fair, Oba Adeyeye Ogunse, wants the United States of America and other countries in the world to contribute to keeping the unity of Nigeria. The only made the appeal when he received the U.S. Ambassador to Nigeria, Mrs. Stewart Sillington, in his palace in Ilefe, the state capital. Oba Adeyeye said the Western country should see the growth of Nigeria as strategic to world development. Any Western world or any Western nation to support any division along our tribal lines. We don't want them to come and support one tribal line above the other. And how do they support? By selling arms and ammunition to them. Please, what we want is peace. My thoughts to the third interest, your dear majesty, the role that you have played in helping this nation and every person in it think of the whole nation out of one part or one party or one group or one problem. But of all of Nigeria. And because I am convinced that this country of yours is as important to the future of the world. Let's take a look at some legal matters. A former Minister of Aviation, Mr. Femi Famikayode, is asking a federal high court in Lagos to hands off his trial on allegations of money laundering. His counsel, Norris and Quakers, wants Justice Rilwa Naikawa to instead order that the case be transferred to the Abuja Division of the Court. Mr. Fani Kayode insists that the facts of the case show that all the transactions which the former minister carried out as director of media and publicity of the Good Luck Jonathan campaign organization for which he was charged took place in Abuja. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission had rearranged Mr. Fani Kayode, Senator Nenadi Usman and two others on a 17-count charge of fraud and money laundering to the tune of 4.9 billion naira. They pleaded not guilty to the charges. Jesus Ekawa has adjourned to September the 26th and 27th for ruling on the issue. And the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission today rearranged a former governor of Gombe State who is also a serving senator, Dandruma Boje, and four others before a federal high court sitting in Jos, the Plateau State capital. Senator Boje and his co-accused are facing an 18-count charge over alleged conspiracy and money laundering to the tune of 25 billion naira. At today's hearing, five prosecution witnesses were cross-examined, but their testimonies could not take the case far. Hearing on the matter has been adjourned to September the 26th and 27th.